about how does a person handle the now? There are certain basic beliefs and ideas a person has. But the question is, with all the beliefs and goals that a man has, how does he handle the now? How does he see, perceive the now? And how does he figure from the now the future? <clears throat> Let's take first the concept of tzedakah. Tzedakah is a very great thing. Wonderful. It's a mitzvah in the Torah. But you have a philosophical problem, which the Gemara Baba Basra, Daftes Amabez, explains first of all that every time you give stucker, a penny, to an ani, you have six brachas, if you have five, you get eleven brachas. So they asked the question, Ramea, if Hashem gives us a mitzvah of tzedakah, and He loves the Aniyim, and He feels sympathy for the Aniyim, and cares about the Aniyim, so then why does He make them poor? Again. And there's also a Marta Muruna, a, a, a Roman woman asked Rabbi Akiva, if your God loves the Aniyim, so why make them poor? Why do you feed them? This is a, this is a rhetorical question. <laughs> what? Because I know an answer. What's the answer? When you're poor, Okay, good. That's part of the answer. <laughs> That's part of the answer. Which means it's for your benefit. Do you like that message? Do you like that message? Do you like that message? Let's make the message a little differently. A guy's sick in the hospital with pain. And... Uh, we say that the Almighty visits the, the sick and he is a mitzvah to visit the sick and he sympathizes with the sick and is a mitzvah bikocholim, right? So the sick man says, Rabbi, if God loves me so much, it's such a mitzvah, so why does he make me sick? Why do I have the pain? Same thing, Tzedakah. <laughs> the Gemara says that... If you care about the Aniyim and you feel about the Aniyim, as a mitzvah of tzedakah, so why do you have Aniyim? <clears throat> In other words, how do we handle the now? The now. <laughs> and really, we said that That the Jewish people are maminim and b'nei maminim. They believe in Hashem. There's no question about it. They believe in Hashem. Right? They believe in Hashem. And uh, it says in Shmos Dalit Lamed Aleph, Vayamein Ha'om, Vayishmu ki poka Hashem is b'nei Yisrael. Yet Moshe Rabbeinu makes a statement, Hey, lo yaminuli. They don't believe in me. The lo shomel Moshe mikotsu ahmoda koshot. So they believe or don't they believe? We'll explain that in a minute. They believe or don't they believe? So it appears as a contradiction. 
we have further the real problem, which is really our week said, which I wanted to talk about, which is what? Moshe Rabbeinu says, Loma Herosalam Hazef. He goes to Paro in the chapter before, and he tells him he wants to take the Jews out of Egypt, but he felt the suffering, and Moshe Rabbeinu feels the suffering of the Jewish people. He sees their pain. He, and he runs away, he sees an Egyptian raising up his hand to, to hit a Jewish person. He tells him, Rosh Olama Sakarecha, why are you doing it? And he, or, and he, and it was one, uh, that's one story. The other story, he sees the Egyptian trying to kill, uh, hit a Jew and he kills the Egyptian, he has to run away. Now he comes back, he has sympathy for the Jewish people, he cares. <laughs> and he goes and uh, Shem tells him to tell Paro, take the Jews out of Egypt. <clears throat> and... Uh, he tells him, and then uh, Paro says, Who Hashem? And, and then he does more work to the Jewish people and harder work to the Jewish people. So here he's supposed to do good, and from good comes bad. He tells the people to, he tells Paro, I want the Jews to go out of Egypt. And so you'd think that since he's a messenger from God, what should take place? <laughs> if you're a messenger from God, what should take place? It should work. So how come a Moshe was a messenger from God and <laughs> told Paro to take the Jews out of Egypt? Paro gives them more work and harder work. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, hey, what's happening with Hashem? Why are you causing why are you causing trouble to the Jews? You told me to take them out. I'm doing your job. I'm being a good person. I'm learning the Torah. I'm following the Torah. And yet, bad comes out of it. Jews get punished more. How do you explain the now? I'm a good person. Why are these troubles happening to me? Or to the Jews? I'm a good person. What does Hashem answer Moshe Rabbeinu? I taught Tireh, you'll see. Okay, what am I going to see? What, do I, what am I supposed to perceive? What am I supposed to understand? So it's how do you deal with the now? You have good intentions. You mean well, you're doing God's deeds and, and things aren't working out. <clears throat> you become more religious and you get a divorce from your wife. How can that good? Your children break up, what happens? Right? <laughs> well, you mean good, you try good, what happens? <laughs> so good intentions, following the right way, they don't see the, always, they don't see the result right away. And Hashem says, what? Hold on, Savlonis, Atatora. Okay, when well, I'll see, I'll understand. But right now, I have the pain, I have the trouble. <laughs> Guy's sick in the hospital. Guy's a poor man. And why am I poor? You love, you love to, uh, you have a mitzvah stalker. <laughs> you love me, and you, you say you care for the underdog, and you care about the yosom and the almana. <laughs> but I'm a yosom, I'm an almana. <laughs> I'm poor. How come? And I'll say to you, don't worry, I taught Tira. You'll see. Listen, have faith, and you'll understand everything. <laughs> right? Listen to the rabbi. Listen to God. You'll see. <clears throat> what am I supposed to see? What happens? But meanwhile, I have pain. Meanwhile, I have this. Meanwhile, I have that. What do I do? What do I say? So first of all, we have to solve a hard problem. We know man has free choice. Yet, the Almighty made Paro's heart hard. Is that fair? He brings punishments to, to Paro to take the Jews out of Egypt. They make his heart hard. In order we should see the miracles, in order to see the hand of God, is that just? Is that a just God? Is that correct? So the Chofetz Chaim on the Torah explains beautifully. He says, of course, of course, man has free choice. And Paro still had free choice. But there are things that the Almighty helps a person. See you a Shamayim. And the things that don't get help from the Shamayim. But you still have free choice. <laughs> you have a situation where you appears to you, whatever it may be, but you can pray, you give tzedakah, 
or you learn Torah. So what does God do? Still have fear, but He helps you along the line. He gives you what the magic word called siyata dishmai, help, extra help. <clears throat> if Hashem takes away the siyu and the siyata dishmai, His special help, and you see all the difficulties that are there, and all the problems come together, you can't handle it. <clears throat> but you have free choice. <clears throat> Never takes away free choice. <clears throat> but He takes away the siyu, the help. So he made his heart hard. I didn't mean make that hard. Normally, when the Derek Shalom wrote, Salelech, Moldichim so the way you want to go, I help you. So for the future, I give you in the now. Right now, you're no good. But for the future, I give you advancement on the, on the future. So in the now, you're no good. But the future will be good. So right now, God gives you your, 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 like your, your uh, interest or the future, or your dividends in the future, in the now. So you have those in the now. You made a decision, so he'll help you, like helps you. But let's see, he doesn't give you the future dividends in the now. And you need money, but you know, sure, but I need money, but tomorrow I'll be a multi I'll get inheritance. Right now, what do I do? I need money, right? Right now I need money. What am I going to do next week? I'm going to get the money next week, right? I need the money now. How am I going to do? So what do you do? You borrow on the future. That's what people believe you. you want, okay. So you want to get the future in the now. <coughs> but let's see, you don't get the future in the now. <coughs> what happens? You're in trouble. Can't manage. So Paro had free choice. But the future and the other things just weren't there. There's so many things happening. And also, so therefore the man... Wherever it is, Paro has, man has free choice, and therefore if the Almighty would just open your eyes and see how many good things God does for you, <laughs> that you think that you're okay, everything's okay, it's not so. Marshi Shiva said that every day, it's like making, every yeshiva is like, every day is like a new world. Every day is like a new yeshiva, a new marriage, a new husband and wife and children. You think it's all in the bag, what happened yesterday it will happen today. Not true. What happened yesterday is that today is a no world. It just so happens by miracle and by chesed Hashem, in the past he makes continue in the present and for the future. But there's no guarantee of anything. It's just that he does chesed and kindness. If he takes anything away, then you're stuck. What do you have? You have loads of problems. So he gives you future dividends in the now. But Sher Husham is also... Another, that's another good thing. He'll charge, if you're good now, so give good for now. You know, later on you're bad, because he loves you, he has mercy, so he does both. The good, he loves you, he gives mercy for future and now. And if in the bad, in the future you'll be bad, he pays you dividends, he pays you right now, because as you are now. What's your question? Are you saying that... Come in. Yeah. Are you saying that, that Hashem didn't harden his heart, he just didn't help him out? That's right. I didn't say the Chafetz Chaim said that. No. <coughs> I said it. Uh, no, it says hard in his heart. He says no. Hard heart means that in the situation that he's in, it's very hard to work. But man always has free choice. No matter what, he always has free choice. And this really was the mistake the Chofetz Chaim said of Elisha ben Avua. When he heard a basco, a voice in heaven that said, "Everybody can do tshuva, but Acher, she think I'm finished." No, no. It means you're not going to get help, but you still have free choice. That's one of the places where Rabbi Goldstein agrees with the Breslin. Never give up hope. Never give up hope. That's how you can be with them. Never. If you're married for five years, not a then six, seven, ten years, don't give it up. Never give up. Don't give up. Because man has free choice, no work. I agree with them. One, one thing I agree with them. So therefore, since you have free choice, so since you have the free choice, now you look at the now. How do you review the now? Right now you have pain. Right now you're, you're poor. Right now you're stuck. Right now you listen to, you listen to Moshe Rabbeinu. You let him speak as your messenger to Paro. 
And he's supposed to make things basically, I'm going to give you this carrot of leaving Egypt, and you're going to fulfill the promise of leaving Egypt and getting the Torah and our Sinai and getting out of Israel like our forefathers, Abraham and Yaakov, Abraham and Yaakov promised us. And now we go forward with the promise. We are maminim, b'nei maminim. We believe and I share all the faith. And right away, what happens? In the now, what happens in the now? Pain, problems. Where's God? What's happening? Why is this happening to me? Where's the justice? What's it about? <coughs> and God says to Moshe Rabbeinu, and Moshe's up deaf and Amayim and Beinamin, except there's a complaint at the time. Avram, you say, Yaakov, I'm not like you, Moshe Rabbeinu. I never asked about God's ways. <laughs> okay, I'm asking for Klaus, you not myself. <laughs> but still, what do you mean questioning God's ways? You have to accept God. But I agree, I accept, but that's normally when things happen normally. But if you're a messenger from God, my Moshe Rabbeinu, to tell and do the magic, we have faith and belief in you, so we have a Muna, you have 100% of the Muna, things work out. 100% of be talking, we had 100% of Muna be talking, what happened? We got slapped and beaten up, we're down on the ground. <clears throat> we're working harder. <clears throat> Comes the Torah and says what? How come the Jews had the audacity on earth to make such a statement? Well, Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu gets punished. By a Dabe Hashem Koshos, he talks to them at the beginning and says, Koshos, what do you mean? How, are you, how can you speak like that? How do you think like that? How can you speak like that? How can you speak like that? And the Jewish people? He says an excuse. Because they were, uh, they were working very hard. What were they doing? Why couldn't they hear the now and see God in the now and know that God is good and believe God is good and, and God is merciful and kindness all for our benefit? How come they didn't see it and feel it? Ah, ooh, ooh. I mean, the guy's in the hospital, pain. You know, Stuck, he's a poor guy, he has no food. Yeah, but don't you see the chesed of God? The chesed of God. Uh, uh, that's his chesed. What is his, what's his punishment there? <laughs> What's happening here? What's, what's happening here? What is it all about? And this is the real problem. It's a real serious problem. What's it all about? What's happening? <laughs> How do you live the now? How do you perceive the now? They have a muna. B'nei ma'aminim. <laughs> They're doing the right thing. <clears throat> and all these things are happening. The wrong, all these things are happening. They do the right thing. When I do the wrong things, what happens? I get pleasure. <laughs> I'm doing, I get friends, I got loads of friends, I got society, I got clapping, I got all these drugs and, 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 and cookies and cakes and goodies. And I'm happy, I'm, I got pleasure in life, I have relaxation and comfort. And now I do the right things and all of a sudden, all these, these, uh, these uh, you call it, uh, goodies come to me. I don't like those goodies, I want different goodies. And God says, I told you, Isa, you'll see. How do you perceive the now? How do you know the now? <laughs> And this is right what the, you said to me. And you have to go a little deeper. A person's in an operation. And an operation they have to operate. And the doctor comes in with his white uniform and takes a knife, a scalpel, and he's doing the cutting and blood oozes out. What do you say? He's bad? Ugly, it's painful. But you know, when it operates, that it's for your benefit. You have to take the pain, no pain, no gain. And you have to know, but that's provided only one way. That at the end, when you, don't, when you get the operation, you accept and you tell the body, I'm going to heal myself. And I tell my body that this is my benefit, don't reject it, because this pain is going to give me gain, and I'm more pleasure later and greater pleasure, and I have this momentarily. That's if you handle the now right. If the Oni, the poor man, the guy in the hospital, the Jews in, the, in Egypt, perceive what's taking place, that it's for their benefit, and God says, I taught Tira, you'll see. Why was it for their benefit, gentlemen? Why did they need more pain? Because God had a cheshman. You have to be in Egypt. How many years? 400 years. No, not when they get out. God does a favor and he moves the 400 years where? Not in Egypt, but before by, by, uh, by Avravim. Yeah. 
And he adds the, the, the time up. So we only Egypt how many years? 210. But, we're not, but how can we do that? How can he add that time up? And how can he get... Because he has to now double the pain in order to make sure that the punishment that we said by Me'eda takes place. We have to get the rest of the, the punishment. Like this, he was handing it out in little dosages. Now he has to put it together in one, one package in order to get out. Your goal is to get out of Egypt. Your goal is to get rid of this slavery. I'm good. And then get the Torah and Harsinai. But what can I do? I have to have justice. Your time is not up. You have to pay for your, 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 your wrong that you did. The wrong that you got to get paid for. So what are you going to do? So we have to give you a little extra punishment now, a little more pain now, in order to be able to what? Get out quicker. But if you're not going to get more pain now, what's going to happen? You'll stay longer in Egypt. And what's going to stay longer in Egypt is going to happen? You're already now 49 levels of Tumor. And you stay a little longer by those friends. What's going to happen? You won't get out, you'll fall in, you get into the drug problems, you get into the, 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 the cults, and you get into the gangs, and you get the girls, and what's going to happen, and you're going to be stuck, you can't, you're in quicksand, you're drowning quickly in quicksand, how are you going to get out? So for your benefit, you don't get out right now, what's going to happen? So it's better you get immediate pain, and you pull out of this problem of 49 uh, uh, places of tumor, and you'll be stuck once 50 is finished, you can't get out, you're finished, finished, gone. So God's saving your life. So the little pain you're getting, you, say, you get a little pain by the scalpel of the, of the surgeon is saving your life to save you. That's provided you look at it as being saved and you learn your message from it and you gain from it and you grow. You grow from being a poor man. You grow in the sick position of a hot sick that you'll do tshuva and do mice and toiva and decide you're going to gain from the surgeon because everything God does is for your benefit, your gain. What are you gaining from it? You're not gaining a darn thing. All you do is complaining and complaining and complaining more and seeing less of God and then saying, where is he? Where's justice? What's happening? And God tells Moshe, Donnie, you may be the, the honor me the, the and you may be the greatest man, but you're not, you're not, in this point, you're not up equal to par with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You, fell, you, you lost that test. <clears throat> Always complaining. What do you mean? I, I, I got pain. I see the Jewish people. I, I, I try to do your will and things don't come out. <laughs> God says, yeah. But don't you realize, don't you understand that you saw then the core idea that God loves you and takes care of you and everything's for your benefit? You just got to see it. Well, I don't, I got, pain is my benefit. But don't you understand, you have to look at another dimension. What do you gain out of it? What are you learning from it? How are you going to change your attitude? How, what, 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 is, what are you doing about it? And this is a very big lesson. Very big lesson. And the Jews are maminim and b'nei maminim. We have the core. But somehow when it comes to the now, we lose our balance. We lose our balance. And more than losing our balance, we don't proceed properly towards our real goal. We get lost and fuzzy towards our real goal. When the now comes, somehow we're involved with the pain rather than on the gain that we're supposed to gain and pulling ourselves out of the mud. We lost our balance and we're falling and we're thinking about falling into the mud and we fall deeper. We worried about ourselves with self-pity and ideas and who knows what comes out of our mouth like Moshe Rabbeinu comes out. Who knows? Instead of seeing Hashem and we seeing Hashem being positive and going forward and seeing the goal. I say, wow. This means we're going to get closer to the gula. That means we're going to get close to Har Sinai getting the Torah. This means that we're going to, we're going to see, see uh, the, the goodness of God. That means we're going to have more emunah. So instead of gaining more emunah, what happened? The Jewish people saw the, the ten makas, right? That it happened to the goyim and not to themselves. Wow. They saw the miracles, right? And they believed in God and believed again in God and believed again. But what happened? When did they really believe in God? Only when they saw and touched the Egyptians dead at the at the Kriyas Yamsov. They believed. They believed. Yeah, I believe. I believe. We believe. Everybody believed. But, but they, had they understood deeper what a miracle is and what is God doing good for them, and really they, they, wouldn't, they could have believed before they left Egypt. They could have believed before they touched and saw the, the Egyptians dead in the Yam. When they had the Nisoyan of the now, they gained, everybody gained, but what did they gain? Totally, to the quality that God wants man to get. So the question is now, at ourselves in the now. We're in the now, and things happen to you, 
or your friends, <clears throat> or any hashkocha practice comes to you, you gotta, a yesodin is God is good. The yesodin means the family, the core belief is God is good, it's merciful. Because why did he create me anyway? It's not for my benefit to get the next world. He didn't create me to kill me, to beat me up. I'm not a happening. I'm not a, ha- I'm not a, uh, a black sheep. I was born, every human being, the Gemara, the Mishnah in, in Menachah says that every person is created, the world was created for him. I mean Sanhedrin, everything the world was created for him alone. The world is for you, for your benefit. So if the whole world's made, why, what, what is he, what gain? How can I help the world? From this situation I'm in, how can I grow more? Every situation causes yourself to grow and develop. How can I grow more from this situation? What can I gain? What new chiddish can I put into the world that I didn't have before? How can I become the great Talmud Chacham, the Torah luminary like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for my situation? He answered, well, I'm an old guy. I'm old already. Nor I'm a young guy. I don't know too much. No. Everybody in the world has free choice. We mentioned clearly. Although Paro, we thought that his free choice was free choice is never taken away. It may be harder. Maybe you have many levels you have to go through that the other person doesn't go through. Or you have many layers. But if you have a will, in Bali Musa say, Ritzoni Harbi, my will is what? My sword. The strength you have is your free will. You make a decision and hold on and fight with all your life. Even the swords on your neck, you're not allowed to meet Yaish. You have to have a will, more than a will. You have to do tshuva. You have to. You have to act. You have to grow. You have to change. You have to do something about it. As long as you have life, you can do something. I had a fellow come to the Chafetz Chaim Yeshiva. He was in the from Chicago. He was in the clothing business. He's already a man of almost 65, 70. And he came to Yeshiva in Amoritz, and he couldn't learn a word, didn't know how to read Olive Bays. We taught him Olive Bays. <coughs> we sat down with him. <coughs> At the end of about seven years, he could read the Gemara, and he could make a blot reading in the Gemara. He was learning. He says, never too late to learn. I said to the man those days, I said, Moshe Rabbeinu started at what age? Let me keep starting. By the way, 80. As long as you're not 80 yet, you, be, you can be like Moshe Rabbeinu. There's never late. But it's hard. Sure, it's harder. It's easier when you're young. <coughs> harder when you're older. <coughs> it's easy if you're born from. It's harder when, you know, it's easier when you're always straight. and never went astray than going astray. But it makes no difference. Everybody in the world was created to be a winner. <coughs> you want to be a winner? You have to be a winner. Say, I'm a winner. I'm going to be a Talmud Chacham. It's hard. I'm late comer. I'm late blossomer. I'm this, I'm that. Whatever it is. But so what? So what? We always have the stories of the poor rich. <coughs> that's, that's what it says in Mishlei. That's it clearly. The dopes can become smarter. And the smarter become even, even more, more depth of understanding. Everybody can change and grow. Right? To be creative, to develop, to happen. That's if you take the now and see the now in the view that God is merciful and kind and loves you and he tells you, use the now, the situation, whatever you're in, and grow from it. Gain. <clears throat> but what's the problem? We push future ideas and we, we have set ideas. <clears throat> we, don't, we, don't, we miss what God's message is. What's God's message to you? What does God ask you to do? It's not just to do mitzvahs. He doesn't want machines to do mitzvahs. He can make, he can make robots. He didn't have to make human beings. He created you with a Yetzirah. He doesn't want Malachim or only pure. Does he want Malachim? No. No. He created you with a Yetzirah. He says control, grow. He wants to put the soul and the body together. You elevate it to grow. Take the spirituality and the eternity in the body world we have and let it grow higher and it reaches higher heights than the Malachim. 
the Jews in Egypt, when it came to this test, they failed. You don't say they don't have a Muna. They have a Muna. They might meet him, but they might meet him. But because Avoda Kosha, whatever the circum, they, they lost their focus. They didn't see their goal. They could have done more. Let's learn from this week, Sedra. Let's decide to grow, to develop, to decide to learn more. To see Hashem in our lives. Hashkoch HaPratis in order to become the great Salam the image of God that God wants us to be. Okay.